Daddy, how do I know when I need new battery cables? Morning. We're here at a friend's farm today to uh, test some battery leads. Uh, I've, had, I've come to a friend's farm because all my own tractors have replaced a few leads a few years ago because I was having problems. So we've come here today with some battery leads and a new battery and the voltmeter. And we, first of all, we're going to test the old battery lead to see the voltage drop during cranking. The uh, lower meter will show the drop across the battery lead when I turn the key. The upper meter will show the actual voltage that the battery is producing during cranking. As you, as you can see, the battery drops to just over 10 volts and there's just over half a volt being lost down the battery lead. I thought at this stage I'd show you how I go about making up my battery cables. I've uh, done a bit of preparation here. I've cut the length I need. This is some 500 amp uh, welding cable. I've uh, took the insulation off each end and just slipped the fittings on because it, it just wastes time on film showing these things. But uh, something a little extra I wanted to show you. Here is a small slither of uh, copper water pipe that I've cut. About um, 8 millimetres wide and the length of the battery clamp. And what I do, there's one already in here, is slide it in on top of the cable so that when you fit the screws, I'll just knock this right in, so that when you fit the screws, the clamping screws, like such, and tighten them. As you can see now, it, uh, it squeezed the cable down quite nicely to get uh, a good connection. And my next stage will be to get the blow lamp and uh, using ordinary multi-cord resin flux, I will feed in about four inch of solder into this so that uh, you get a better connection and it can't get any corrosion in there. Needless to say, when it's all fitted, I'll put in some uh, petroleum jelly on the terminals to stop corrosion and uh, black wire creep going up the actual cable. But now, I'm going to uh, solder this, so uh, I'll just stop the camera while I do this, because uh, it takes quite a while. Well that's fed in about 4 inch of solder and that's uh, nicely got the end but it's not allowed solder to creep too far down the uh, cable and making it rigid because that's what you don't want. So now I'll turn my attention to the other end. On the other end I've already fitted a cable, a uh, cable lug. Now if you haven't got a crimper like I have you can just solder these but I'm going to crimp this first. This is a little toy I bought off eBay. It was only £35, would you believe it? And you put the uh, lug in there, shut the valve, and then just pump away. And that. As you can see, that's uh, nicely crimped on the end there. I'm now going to proceed to solder that on there. And, I, and again, this time, I'm just going to feed in about two inch of solder, uh, just enough to set the end without making it rigid. Once 
once the joint is hot enough it just draws the solder in and uh, that's nice and corrosion proof now we'll just uh, put a little bit of a petroleum jelly on the other side of it if I turn to the other end now um, it's still hot so I won't touch it with my bare hands but as you can see I've not put in that much that it's made it inflexible but just enough to stop any corrosion getting in there so now we'll switch back to the farm where I'll show you the fitting and the testing anybody wanting to test the battery leads I just thought I would show you the connections you connect one onto the battery lead where it goes on the battery and then the black wire the other wire goes down and connects to the other end of the same lead just here on the starter motor and when you connect it the actual voltmeter will show zero volts it won't actually start reading anything until you turn the key and crank the starter motor and then you see the voltage drop down the cable we've now replaced the battery lead with one I made up earlier out of 500 amp cable with uh, swaged and soldered ends so now that the test to see the improvement As you can see now with the new cable fitted, the voltage drop on that cable has dropped from 0.55 volts to 0.11. So we've reduced the power loss by 80% and uh, hopefully when I put the stop in, the tractor will start up. Well I hope you all got that. My rule of thumb for battery cables is 0.3 of a volt per cable. Any more than that then they need investigating to see if they're attached properly or replacing. And remember, the cable from the battery to the chassis of the tractor is just as important as the one from the battery to the starter motor, so check them both. Happy tractoring everybody!